Good afternoon. Welcome and thank you for joining us for the March edition in our Supply Chain Management Webinar Series. A couple housekeeping things before we get started. If you have a question during the presentation, uh, just click the button in your control panel there that says raise your hand and I will try to answer the questions as they come up. If not, I'll catch them at the end of the webinar. So without further ado, let's get started. Today we're going to talk about building a resource requirements plan. Now, first thing we're going to cover is what is resource requirements planning. Second, what data do you need to construct one of the key components in this planning process called a bill of resources? And third, how do you use resource requirements planning? So let's just jump right in. Resources are things that we need as organizations to be able to deliver the product or service that we sell our customer. So I want to have you take a short quiz here to see what your view is of what resources are that we should be looking at when we're talking about resource requirements planning. So this is a quick poll. You have five choices there. What is a resource that should be considered in resource requirements planning? You can click one, none, all of them. But what I'd like you to do is take about 30 seconds to click which of these five items you think is a resource that should be included in resource requirements planning. So you're on. Start clicking. Okay, poll is now closing, and let's see what we got. Hundred percent of you chose turret lathes and steel. These are classic resources that we'd want to include in resource requirements planning. Uh, as a matter of fact, steel is one of the examples we'll see in a few minutes in one of the other slides that we're going to be viewing. Freezer capacity. If you think about it, if your business is dealing with frozen goods and you have a limited amount of freezer space, that can be a critical resource. Cash flow. Half of you chose cash flow. Again, this is one that we would think of. If you don't have the money to buy the material that you need in order to keep your production line running, you're in deep trouble. Interestingly enough, no one chose Master of Science Electrical Engineering. Well, you see, this comes from my background when I actually worked in electronics manufacturing. We had, at one point, a shortage of engineers who had masters of science in electrical engineering. This actually limited us in what we could do for our customers. So in that application, having qualified people with masters of science of electrical engineer was one of the critical resources that we needed in order to validate our master production schedule. The key here is this. Depending on what your company does, what industry you're in, what the current economic climate is in your market, things like if you're a startup company or you're 
a Fortune 50 company, resources in this context can be anything that you have a limited supply of that you need to be able to deliver the product that comes from your master production schedule. So let's move on. So we've covered resource requirements planning. And before I move on to the next, I just want to point out one thing. Resource requirements planning is used to validate the production plan. The production plan is a document that comes out of sales and operations planning. It says, what are you going to be selling by product family over the next several time periods? So with that, let's move on to the data that you need to construct this resource bill of material. Now, for those of you that know me, bicycling is my passion. So anytime I can use an example that has bicycles in it, I do. In this particular company, this example, we manufacture bicycles. Bicycles are a product family for us. We manufacture other things, too. We have a product family called bicycles. Bicycles consist of single bicycles, one person on a bike at a time tandem bicycles, two or more people on the bike at the same time, and recumbent bicycles. These are bicycles that you sit down in and ride, sort of like riding a lawn chair. In this example here, the company has determined that their critical resources that they have limited supply of that can constrict their ability to deliver product consist of steel and the actual manpower in hours that it takes to assemble their product. Now for a resource bill of material, you don't need to know the exact amount of steel, the exact amount of labor required to make a particular configuration of bicycle. You need to know what the average amount of steel is, what the average amount of labor is to construct a bicycle in each of the three types that show up in this product family. So for example, a single bike takes 0 .00030 tons of steel and basically a third of an hour to assemble. A tandem bicycle takes a little bit more. Recumbent bicycle takes in between as far as steel concern is concerned, but because of its complexity, it takes double the amount of time of a single bicycle. So in developing the data that you need to do resource requirements planning, you need by product family a bill of resources as is being shown on the screen right now and you need a production plan that comes out of sales and operations planning. So these are the two main data elements that you need. So we've covered what is resource requirements planning and the data that you need to construct a bill of resources. Moving on to the last item, using resource requirements planning. Here's where you pull the production plan and the bill of resources together. In this context, we have a production plan that says for the month of May, we want to build 1,000 single bikes, 500 tandem bikes, and 2,500 recumbent bikes. For this particular demonstration, we're only concentrating on labor hours. Now, the reason we're only concentrating on labor hours is because we already did the steel content and found out that we had enough steel to meet this production plan. 
So now we're looking at the labor content and the total labor we're going to need to produce these 4,000 bicycles in the month of May. All it is is straight math from here. 1,000 single bikes times 0 .30 labor hours per bike is 300 hours. You sum them all up, it comes up to a total of 2,000 hours of labor that we need to produce this production plan. The problem is we only have 1,600 hours of labor available. And this happens all the time in manufacturing. Now, please bear with me, was too fast on the click here. The next thing we do in resource requirements planning is try to figure out how to resolve this imbalance. We need 2,000 hours worth of labor. We only have 1,600 hours. So I'm going to put you to work again with another poll. This poll here asks, how can we resolve the capacity shortfall? You've got five options. You can pick one, none, all. What I'd like you to do is read through them. And over the next minute or so, put your selections. What could you do to resolve this capacity shortfall? You're on your own. Please vote. Okay, we've got a couple of you still reading, and I need you to vote so we can wrap this up. All right, here we go. Let's see what everyone had to say here. Okay, congratulations to all of you. No one checked the last one. Put the schedule out to production and hope for the best. Although I will tell you that's happens frequently in companies that don't use resource requirements planning. Now, you've got a tie here. 83% said work overtime. 83% said increased production efficiency. Well, working overtime to increase your capacity is something that you can do right here, right now, to solve the problem. Increasing your production efficiency, while it would technically increase your capacity, typically is a longer term task. It can take months or even years to do. So when we're looking at resource requirements planning, what can we do over the next two or three months Increasing production efficiency usually doesn't become practical. Now, two-thirds of you picked shift some of the load to another time period. This is another classic mechanism to resolve an imbalance when you have too much load and not enough capacity. You can run some jobs early. You can Look at when you have jobs scheduled for May and check with your customers or your distribution network and possibly instead of making them in May, make them in June. But we're basically down to two things you can do. You can either increase your capacity or reschedule your load. Now, some of you picked change the labor standards in the resource bill of material. Again, yes, this can resolve a load imbalance like this, but typically that's another long-term test that will take several months to do because you have to take your current standards, 
you have to do an analysis of how you're actually performing to those standards, get everybody to buy into that we can change the standard. So all good answers. And let's just jump back into this production plan that we have here. The object is we're trying to resolve that imbalance. You can either increase the capacity or reschedule the load one way or the other. All right, so what we've covered, what resource requirements planning is, it's a way to validate the priority plan stated in the production plan, what you need to build when with your capacity for limited resources to build it. To do that, we need a bill of resources for each product family. And then when we have the production plan and the bill of resources, it's a straightforward thing to run the numbers, find out where we have imbalances, and then it really gets down to you have to increase capacity and or shift some of the load. All right, well, that's it for building a resource requirements plan. If any of you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to stay on the line and answer them. If not, I will see you all next month. And next month we are doing improve performance to schedule with time fences. Bruce, I see you have your hand up. I'm going to turn your mic on. If you've got a mic there, I can answer your question. Well, I'm on the phone. Can you hear me, Rick? Yes, I can. Hey, Rick, I, I, when you increase capacity, obviously you, um, you, I mean, with the overtime and, and you know, you're looking at some, you know, higher labor, you know, time and a half type labor possibly. Um, where does the, you know, additional money, you know, spent, does that come into play anywhere in your, in your thoughts? In that, and that's, that's a really good question because we are all constrained by budgets. Because then we, you go by the cash flow, right? I mean, we talked about cash flow being a resource. Right. Well, now you're spending more money at a, you know, you're spending labor, using labor at a higher rate now with the overtime maybe being, you know, time and a half type of deal. Right. And in this com in this particular example that I use, cash flow wasn't an issue for them. If it had Correct. been, it yeah. would have been one of the things okay. on that chart. We only looked at the labor, right? Okay. Right. Labor and steel were their mm -hmm. constraining resources. Okay. In that context, if I spend a little bit more on running overtime or running a second shift, if mm -hmm. it allows me to produce more product, mm -hmm. there is a, a trade-off there. Is it worth spending additional money for overtime or putting on another shift? Will I get a significant return on that investment? That comes down to a classic business decision that then you have the ability to go to management and say, okay, if we spend this much money, we can make this much money. And then they have the information to say yes or no. Yep. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Very good. Real good. Anyone else have any questions? Okay. Well, again, I thank you for joining me for this month's webinar. And hope you can join us next month for improving performance to schedule with time fences. You all have a good day. Take care.